When and why and how do you ever self-disclose your own struggles with trauma and your own victories on your journey to recovery? So this is, um, and this question came out of something that I was doing where I talked about my own, um, my own experience. I was saying that I was attracted to the field of trauma um, primarily because of my own history where I have an ACE score of nine. And then I went on. I don't usually share what I had to do to get through it because, and this is one of those challenges that you're going to have to kind of think through. If you have a trauma history of your own, um, that my constant fight is this, not to see everybody else have to go through resolution like I did. Um, How did I resolve it? How did I move through it? And thinking that that's the way. Uh, It's kind of like what I experience a lot of times with people that, that have moved through addiction. The way that they did it is the way they think everybody needs to do it. So I I am really cognizant of that, and I don't do that with folks. What I do is I sometimes share with them, mostly when I'm lecturing or teaching uh, courses, I will share with them that I have a high A score, and that's it. I don't elaborate on that at all. And so what do I self-disclose? What I self-disclose to clients isn't my own history of pain and misery and what I've done to get through it. Um, that's really not appropriate for these folks. I know there's a lot of people that don't agree with that, but I'm just going now from, from a perspective of this, what the science would suggest. What I do instead is I will talk about my character as a person and what they're likely to experience with me. Now, if some of that is colored by my trauma, I, I can easily explain that. You know, I, um, even at my age, and I'm getting old, um, in my late 60s, um, you know, I st- still don't like somebody walking up from behind me and putting their hands on my shoulder. Uh, that has a lot to do with my history. Uh, and so I will, you know, I will, if I was going to tell somebody something, one of the things that you might notice from me is I'm jumpy if you walk up behind me and tap me on the shoulder. And, you know, this, and the reason it is is because of my own history. But I, and if I react in kind of a negative way, um, I'm sorry, and I'll try to, I really will try not to do that. But it's really more about me as a person that I share with folks, which when I say character, I'm not talking about what I do or what I like or what my hobbies are or how many grandchildren I have or what my interests are. Who am I as a person? What they're going to find if they work with me is that I'm really curious. They're going to find that um, I, uh, I assume people are further along than they are. I assume that if they want to know something, they'll figure it out on their own because that's what I do. Um, and so when I'm orienting people to who I am, I'm sharing those things with folks. And I apologize in advance that at some point it may slip into therapy. And if it does, it's okay to call me on it because I have traits and just being a human being, I have traits that sometimes pop into a session that don't belong there. And I'm very clear about what those are. And and that's okay. That's your self-disclosures around character and personality help your client. Telling your story a woe makes you feel better and you're hoping that they learn something from it, but I'm gonna really discourage you from that. Not that it's not that it's always inappropriate, but if you are going to disclose I would suggest you would have a really, really good reason for that. Um, not to kind of get that, what, what I call the social learning buddy thing going. Whereas you went through that. Well, I went through that too. So here we're, we're joined now at the hip. We're buddies. Don't do that with your trauma clients. Um, if you have something that it's fundamentally affected the way you think, um, they have the right to know that because it's affecting how you see them. And, and that, is, that affects their treatment. But your trauma story, most of your clients are never going to know that, or, and nor should they. Just like you're not going to encourage them to tell their stories to everybody else either. Um, if, if they're able to resolve it and, and keep themselves regulated, 
what's the advantage of them constantly reviewing their pain and misery? Remember, there's a principle at work here. The principle was originally proposed uh, by George Kelly in the mid-1950s, who was one of the first cognitive psychologists. And essentially, if you boil down his expectancy theory, what he basically says is that whatever you focus on, you get more of. So if you are always focusing on your story and how, how you're, not, you're not really healed yet, what I'm going to suggest to you is if you, if you are going to share anything with somebody, it always be couched in terms of what I learned to move past it, not the details of the story itself. And you don't need the story. They don't need the story in order to do that. Um, what, what did I learn to help me move forward and move through? And what have I seen other people learn and move forward or move through? We have this, this almost compulsive um, belief that they have to get in and feel this stuff in order to heal, and that's just wrong. So again, how much do we self-disclose? Only the parts that help the client be able to function better in therapy. Your character as their therapist is important to that. Your traits in therapy. I often tell people early in therapy, I may have to stop and, and compose myself because I'm trying to organize what's going on in my head, organize what you're telling me and make sense of it. And I don't know you very well. And when, I, and when that happens, I lose track of what you're saying in the moment because I'm trying to organize it. If I do that, what I'm going to do is stop tell you that I've done it and get and ask for 30 seconds to just get me refocused. It's not because your story isn't important to me. It's that I'm trying to make sense of it. And sometimes in the process of doing that, I lose track of this, of the current moment. And I really want to pay attention to you. So I hope it's okay if I stop, if I catch myself um, doing that. So that's, that's a self-disclosure. But it's a self-disclosure that is actually helpful for your client. And it doesn't go into the details of my own history. It just is basically, this is who I am and this is what you're likely to experience.